Zero accounting software reports overview. Get ready to be an office hero with Zero. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage. We set up in a prior presentation. Gonna zoom in a bit, holding down control, scrolling up on the mouse wheel to get to 175%. Zoom in, opening the demo company, but doing so by hitting the reset button, resetting the data and opening the demo company at the same time. We're gonna be opening up our standard two reports like we do every time in the new tabs, hiding this icon first. Right clicking the tab up top, duplicating it, right clicking on that tab, duplicating it again, and then go into the middle tab and go into the accounting drop down. We want the balance sheet report and then tab to the right. And let's now pick up accounting and the income statement report. These are the major two financial statement reports we have been opening up every time back to the tab in the middle. Let's change the date, bringing it to a custom date of 2022. And there we go. And that's the setup process that we have been doing every time. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. So usually every time we open up the file, we're gonna have the informational tab that I'll usually put on the left-hand side when I'm entering data such as forms and so on and then the major financial statement reports, balance sheet and income statement, which we could replace with one report of a trial balance, which we'll take a look at a little bit shortly and more in detail later. Uh, and, but so now we wanna take a look at the reports in general. So I'm gonna keep these three tabs. I'm gonna open one more tab, right click and duplicate the tab again and just explore some of the other reports. Now, as we do so, want to keep in mind, these two reports are the main reports. Whenever we look into reports, we kind of get overwhelmed or it's easy to get overwhelmed by the number of reports. But if you kind of think in your mind, hey, look, these two are the financial statement reports. Pretty much all other reports are giving more detail, expanding upon one or multiple line items on the balance sheet or the income statement then it's a lot easier to kind of sort in your mind these other reports. So let's just give a quick recap of the balance sheet. You will recall that the balance sheet stands for as of a point in time, where we stand as of a point in time. It has assets, it's got liabilities, it's got the equities. The assets represent what the company has in order to help generate revenue in the future, broken out into current assets and fixed assets, and then possibly other assets that aren't current. And then we've got the liabilities that represents stuff that we owe to other people, third parties, part of the financing of the business so that we can finance the assets we have to generate the revenue. Current liabilities in there and then long term if we had any. And then the equity represents the book value of the company, which could be calculated assets minus liabilities. Or you can think about it as the owner's share of the assets as opposed to the uh, liability or um third party shares own uh, claims to the assets, for example, equity then being broken out by the type of company it is or business it is, is it a company? Is it a sole proprietorship? Is it a partnership? So you might have different accounts in here, but equity as a whole is in essence the same. And then the income statement is going to break out part of the activity, how we have done over a past time frame typically a year. So we've got income and expenses. This is our performance report to show how, how well we did. Revenue and expenses being the primary two categories of the report. Now, keeping that in mind, let's go to the right and look at the other reports and just get a, a glossary overview of them and how they relate to the major financial statement reports. So we're gonna go into the reports dropdown or the reports center, let's call it, and see what else we have here. 
So also just realize whenever you're thinking about a data input form, such as any of these items, you want to consider first, what's the major impact of that data input on the financial statements, and then consider any other subsidiary ledger impact that it might have. And that'll help you to kind of uh, give a thought process through these reports. Now, up top, we've got the favorites. Those are marked off with this little star. So if you go down to all the reports below and you add a star to any of them, they're going to be brought up into the favorite reports. So clearly up in here, most people will have the balance sheet and the income statement because those are the major financial statement reports. If they're in the favorites and you hit the drop down, they're going to be under the star item. So you can find them just going to the drop down without having to go into the reports at all, which is nice. Now let's go down to the financial reports. Next, we got the financial performance and some of these reports organize the data into a nice snapshot type of view and or give information designed for like budgeting out into the future. Now we do want to keep a difference in our mind from the budgeting process and the accounting process. The accounting process organizes the financial transactions that are entered possibly and primarily from the standard forms that are going to record past financial transactions in order to create the financial statements and related reports, balance sheet, and the income statement. Budgets are designed to project into the future and think about what is going to happen into the future to, to give us an idea of how well we're doing performance-wise. Budgeting is a great tool, but note it's not solely in the realm of the accountant oftentimes, or primarily, because it's going to take not only the accounting knowledge that the accountant has to organize the reports, but it's also going to take kind of speculations on how much advertising do you project to have next year or what do you think the market's going to do, all that kind of stuff that management needs to know. Now, if you're a small business, you might be doing your own budgeting, of course, and therefore these tools are going to be useful for your taking your past data and try to making projections from it into the future. However, if you work in accounting departments, you want to keep those two things kind of separate in your mind, the accounting tasks and the budgeting tasks. And uh, if you're a bookkeeper, you want to keep in mind that you can't generally just automatically create the budgets or at least not very detailed ones without the input from the owners of the business because they're the ones that are going to give you the, the other data other than past financial data to project out into the future. Okay, so that said, we've got kind of these snapshot reports, analytics. This gives you your data in like a kind of a fancy snapshot. It's not, not really a traditional kind of report it's trying to give you those those uh, pictorial views so it could be useful but not not exactly the the standard financial statement reports you would generally be thinking of when we're when we're going into our reports and if i go to the other one here this is going to be short-term cash flow so oftentimes our financial statements as we know are on an accrual basis by default typically which will be dependent on how we're setting up our business meaning do we have to invoice our clients or do we collect cash at the point of sale? And so considering our books are gonna be on an accrual basis, if we're using an accrual system, it could of course be useful to think about our cash flow and make sure we're okay with the cash flow. And this could help us as a tool for you know cash flow projections into the future. So once again, this is kind of a, a projection type of tool. We might go into it a little bit more detail later, but it's not like a traditional type of uh, report. So it's it's a it's a neat tool though. But we'll go we'll go back to the reports and just give an overview of them. And so then we've got the budget manager, budget summary, variance. These are types of reports that are projections into the futures, as opposed to traditional accounting reports that are given information about past data. We might talk about budgeting in like its own section, business performance uh, information. So if I go into the business performance. We have another nice tool and it's given you some of the kind of ratio analysis of your reports, which is really neat because because a lot of times, a lot of these automated tools, you can take your financial statements and give some of your ratio analysis, which can help you in the decision making process. And a lot of like tools out there, they, they're, they're separate from the accounting software to give you this kind of uh, analytical data but now you can you can get this kind of data in the system. So once again, this isn't really normal financial reporting, but it is part of the reporting that is based on past 
data, which is usually more of a managerial type of thing because you do these ratios analysis in order to make projections uh, out into the future. So neat tool here that, uh, that Zero has on that one. So back to the reports. So that's taking the relation between the reports and trying to and, and using them to to make decisions or get some more information that could be made decisions upon. So then we have the cash summary. This is another interesting report that you might not see in a lot of other accounting software looking like it's breaking out the income statement on more of a cash flow basis as opposed to say an accrual basis which is kind of like a statement of cash flows on using a direct method for the operating section. We'll talk about the statement of cash flows later. It's a major financial statement report, but it's usually made after and constructed from the balance sheet and the income statement. And usually they use the indirect method because it's often required. So we don't get to see oftentimes kind of like the direct method, which is more intuitive, kind of breaking down the income statement on like a, like a cash type basis in essence. So you can see your you got your sales here. If I went for the this is for the month ended. Let's take this for uh, the year. Let's say we say it's going to go from January first and update it. So now we've got our cash flow here 2022 22 uh, 227 86. If I compare that say to the income statement, we had the 30,623.86. So I won't dive into that report in more in a lot of detail right now, but it's an interesting report that you might not see in a lot of other accounting softwares. Let's go back to the reports and go to the some of these that will you will most likely often see in other accounting softwares. So we went to we just did the finance reports. Let's go to the financial statements. Obviously, these are the standard ones where we have the balance sheet and the income statement checked off as favorites. So we've seen those. We've got a blank report, so we can kind of construct our report. We've got depreciation schedules, which again is another kind of interesting area. We'll talk about depreciation uh, in a future presentation. Nothing's in it at this point in time. Depreciation is related to, if I go to the balance sheet and we go to the, the fixed assets, we're going to have to allocate the cost in depreciation. Now it gets confusing to do that because you might have different depreciation schedules for a tax basis versus an accrual basis. Oftentimes we might be reliant on tax software to help us to organize our depreciation schedules. But sometimes tax, the, the accounting software could have the capacity to do some of that internally. And then the question is, do you wanna use the internal stuff or just use adjusting entries and use the tax software? So we might discuss that more in future presentations this is another report that is interesting and you might not see all the time in other financial software so then we've got a disposal schedule also related to basically the fixed asset fixed at asset recon uh, reconciliation we've got the income statement we've got the management report let's take a look at that one so again an interesting report that you might not see in another a lot of other uh, of softwares we got the cash, receive cash, spent cash, credit card payments, surplus, closing bank balance, profitability. So it's a kind of a kind of a snapshot type of report that might be useful for management, giving you you know the change on the right hand side, direct cost, gross profit, other income, expenses, balance sheet, debtors, creditors, net asset, sales. So it's kind of giving you a, a snapshot type of report that could be useful for a you know a quick look of items. So let's go back to the accounting dropdown and go to the reports again. Now, obviously we might be able to construct similar kind of reports like some of these by using some of the customization on the reports. So, you know, we got a lot of data on the balance sheet and the income statement that we can then kind of customize and do comparative reports and whatnot. So some other software like a QuickBooks or something often has a lot of reports that are comparative reports within their report manager and a lot of those you can actually construct from using the tools to customize your reports. So if you compare like these reports to something like a QuickBooks or something, you might say, well, there's a lot less reports here, but that's because again, a QuickBooks might be putting a lot of reports in that are just comparative reports. These reports up top are actually, you know, different in things that you might not see in say like a QuickBooks and the customization tools 
are different in Zero than say a QuickBooks. And I think they're more flexible in some ways. So you could have actually more flexibility in some ways, which is which is interesting. So in any case, statement of cash flows. So now we've got the statement of cash flows direct method. So they're using the direct method here. Again, that's uh, interesting. So now we've got uh, the operating activities. Let's hit the drop down up top and go to that. Now the direct method, I kind of like seeing it in the direct method. That means that uh, that uh, you are basically reconstructing the income statement. So when we when we do the statement of cash flows, that's the that's the third financial statement. So you got the balance sheet, you got the income statement, and then the statement of cash flows. Because the balance sheet and the income statement are basically on an accrual based method, you might think, okay, I would also like to see the cash flow because that's important too. Which since the income statement is really the activity report, you can kind of try to reconstruct the income statement on terms of rather than an accrual basis and a cash flow basis. So now you've got receipts from customers instead of sales and then payments uh, to suppliers and then cash receipts from other operating activities. So that's kind of neat. The indirect method would be trying would, would be a reconciliation method. The downside of the direct method is that a lot of financial statement reporting uh, places want to see a reconciliation indirect method because there is a reconciliation of the net income in essence and the operating section to the to the net income on cash flow versus accrual but interesting investing activities and you know the financing activities the general outflow now notice that this report ties into then the the cash flow so net net change cash and cash equivalents at end of the period 494633 so if i go to the balance sheet and we look at our cash here we're going to say 494633 so you can kind of think of the statement of cash flows as expanding upon the the cash component so it's kind of connected to the to the balance sheet account of cash but it's also of course basically reconstructing your financial statements instead of on an accrual basis basically on a cash flow basis we'll, we'll dive more into the statement of cash flows uh, in a future presentation reports let's see what else we got here we've got the statement of cash flow statement of owner's equity this is a this is another one that's nice to have and it could be a little bit confusing to set up i'm going to i'm going to try to set this from january let's go to 2022 2022 january and let's go to December 31st, 2022, 2022, December 31st. Okay, so now we've got the statement of equity. So it's just giving the opening balance, current year earnings, and the total equity. So the equity is something that, I, I, it's another report <laughs> that you don't often see in, in other software like a QuickBooks. Sometimes what QuickBooks will do is they'll roll over the net income and try to try to roll it over so you'll actually see a net income in the equity section on like a QuickBooks software versus a zero software. They're not doing that. The zero software is actually more professional not to do that. I think QuickBooks is trying to kind of give an indication of, hey, look, the balance sheet is connected to the income statement. Here's the net income as part of the equity section. But it kind of messes up some of your reporting sometimes, especially when you're doing like a partnership and you're trying to break out the, the income to multiple partners. And now you got this net income showing up down there. So it's kind of a messy, a messy thing, although they're trying to make it helpful. I, I, I'm a little skeptical in terms of setting up this, the statement of equity and how well, how flexible it is. If you have a complex partnership with multiple partners, statement of partners, equity, or, or a more complex corporation on how easy it is to kind of break out uh, that information but i like it i like that they have it there so we'll maybe dive into that in a future presentation back into the reports and let's see what else we we got the tracking summary actually wait this is not the one i was on i'm going to go back into the reports and we want to go to i was down here so statement of equity let's go to the payables so age payable detail and the payable summary. So these these reports are gonna tie into, and these are traditional reports and all kind of accounting softwares typically. Let's go to the detail 
I'm gonna open it in a new window this time. That might be a little better to do. And so these reports should give you more detail about the balance sheet account of the payable. So if I hit the custom date, make this at the end of December. So now we've got our payable breaking out the who we owe money to. And the bottom line I just want to point out here is that the total is given a sub ledger 10,291.84, which should tie out to the balance sheet uh, 10,291.84. So it's a sub ledger, it's breaking out more detail about an account on the balance sheet. So let's close that one out. So we'll talk more about that in the future. And then th this will give you the detail, aged receivable detail. So let's let's just open up the summary on this one. This is the same thing, but on the balance sheet, it's breaking out the accounts receivable, 9,172.63. If I change the date and end it on the 31st and update it, now we've got it broken out by customer for the receivables, uh, 9,172.63. So I just want to point out that this is giving that same information by customer. And some accounts have that necessary added subledger. So the receivables and the payables are the clear two that need a subledger that breaks out who owes us money and who exactly do we owe money to, how old and outstanding is it. So then we've got the billable uh, expenses. So if you have items that are billable, you've selected them uh, as something that you pay that you want to invoice, then this is will give you information on that. That's kind of a customized type of thing. We'll, we'll talk about billable items in the future. Uh, contact transaction summary. So we've got the contact uh, transactions here. So that's going to be, well, let's take a look at it. I should have, I should have opened it in a new window. So contact information. So it's going to give us a drop down of our contact summary information. So that's just interesting. We might find that information or much of that information already by going to the contact drop down suppliers and uh, customers here. But we got reports for the contact information that possibly could be constructed. In that case, expense claim detail. Let's go into that one. Nothing is in it thus far. I believe that report is is saying if a if if an employee you know it claimed an, is claiming an expense or something like that. I think it might tie into the mileage, uh, like if they're charging or if they're if they're trying to reimburse someone or something like that type of report. So income and expense by contact. So now we're breaking up an income line item by contact. So if so, so if I break this out, 2022. Okay. So, so now we've got the contact over here, and we've got the income and the expenses. So now we're breaking out the activity of income and expenses. If I go back onto the income statement, income here is in one lump sum line item. Now, typically you don't want to break out the income. Uh, to too many lines like you don't want to say I sold this kind of inventory that kind of inventory or this service that service because you might be able to get that added detail from subsidiary reports breaking it out by customer breaking it out by uh, item what you sold so it's so that's why the income is usually like one or two a few lines whereas the the added detail you can break out by uh, by customer and same with the expenses we put the expenses in here by category not by vendor who we paid typically and then we could have sub reports to break that out so we might be able to customize this report and filter it which we'll talk about more in future presentations but i won't get into all those options right now but it's backing up and supporting income statement accounts is what i want to get at at this point okay so then we're on so expense playable invoices detail so these are the the invoices that are going to be still outstanding and that ties into in essence the accounts receivable account because the invoice is the thing that increases the accounts receivable so now we are in essence looking at the receivables for the open invoices that's the detail uh, receivable invoice detail or these are the payable invoices related to the accounts payable and the receivable invoice detail and you got to be kind of careful. They, they sometimes interchange, Zero does, this term of invoice and bill. So you got to kind of think about, okay, it's a payable. 
So that's a liability. Instead of, I would think they would call it payable bill detail, maybe, and then receivable invoice detail or something like that. So they're kind of mixing up that bill and invoice term, it seems to me, from time to time, but little distracting, not too bad once you get used to it. And then, of course, you got the payroll reports. These are reports in and of themselves that will be specific to payroll. Payroll is its whole, whole world onto itself because uh, you have a bunch of different reporting requirements. In the United States, we have, of course, the, the payroll taxes and withholdings and whatnot, and then human resources requirements, Form 940s, 941s, W-2s, W-3s. All that stuff is going to require added reporting information that could be constructed, but only in Zero Software if you have payroll turned on and you're processing payroll through the system. Otherwise, you might process payroll with a third party provider that might help you out with some of those added reports and just add the detail in the system necessary. Then you got the reconciliations. The main reconciliation report is going to be the bank reconciliation and possibly credit card reconciliation reports. These are not like normal reports in that they're not being constructed when you do the financial when you when you when you add financial transactions they're i would call them internal control reports they're going to be tying out our financial data to what is on the bank statement you can think of them as kind of supporting the in the balance sheet account of cash but they're really doing a lot more than that because if we can verify all the transactions in cash because there's a double entry accounting system it's actually given a huge internal control on everything else as well so we'll get into those reports in their own section 1099 reports in the United States, we have reporting requirements for employees to get a W-2 and then 1099s if you're paying like a contractor. So the government, my interpretation is basically the government saying, hey, we have an income tax. We want to know if you paid someone else because it's income to them. If you paid a business that's incorporated, we're not going to worry about that because we think we have enough leverage over them we've already got them by the throat right they're, they're you're, if we don't need you to rat them out right but if you're paying contractors then we think that those guys might try to go under the radar and we don't have them by the throat yet you know so we need you we need you to help us get them so <laughs> so give us a 1099 report for those small contractors so it's going to be another kind of burdensome thing that we'll have to set up just so that we can obviously be in compliance with that so foreign currency gains and losses and the general ledger is going to be a major kind of report that kind of gives you the detail which is similar to if i clicked on any of these accounts the activity report is typically kind of like the general ledger giving you the, the detail the transaction detail so the general ledger should give you kind of all the accounts is what traditionally will be there the general journal let's go into that report so now the journal, the journal entries are going to be the debits and credits typically that you that you enter uh, into the system. So we've got yeah the debit and credits. So they're showing us the transactions in terms of debits and credits. This is just for the month of December. So that can be an interesting report because it can help you to see what has been happening, and and then and then look at it in terms of debits and credits because most of the data input that we're doing is not in terms of uh, debits and credits. So you, you could go in here and kind of kind of look at this report to see that you also may be able to use a report like this to try to bill out your clients, for example. You might say, hey, look, if I have so many transactions or so many accounts that are affected within a certain range, I'm gonna bill you based on how many accounts. So if you're within this range, I'm going to charge this much if you're so that's a one concrete way that you might be able to get away from charging based on just uh on on just time which can be a little little bit uh nubious kind of uh, hard to track and whatnot so then you got your sales tax report we'll probably get into sales tax in the future that's another taxes always complicate uh, the system trial balance this is a great report that gives the information in terms of debits and credits as opposed to uh, the balance sheet and income statement. So if I change this to the year of January, January, 
2022 let's say and or December let's go to the end of December what am I doing what are you doing so then we've got the debits and credits over here so it you can think of it as in essence the balance sheet on top of the income statement but you don't have all the subtotals so so it's basically the balance sheet uh, what happened here this is this is not the balance sheet. I'm gonna go back I gotta go back and so here's the balance sheet and so balance sheet but it has all these subtotals and whatnot on top of in essence the income statement assets liabilities equities income and expenses this is going to be ordered by the code up top so you notice the checking account was not the top account on the balance sheet because it was overdrawn so it was a liability got flipped to a liability but in essence balance sheet accounts on top of the income statement accounts the reason this is a useful report in practice is that you can open this report if you're used to it instead of the balance sheet and the income statement and as you enter financial transactions as you enter the data forms when you want to check them to the activity on the financials you can open this report and you can drill down on the activity in the same way as the balance sheet and the income statement but now you only have one tab open instead of two and it's a shorter report due to the fact that you don't have all the subtotals although you got to be able to understand where the cutoffs are these are assets assets they give you the nice the types here some other um softwares don't do that so you can actually see where the assets liabilities and equity are so nice report to to work with so we'll, we'll deal with that later transaction account uh account transactions so let's open that one up account transactions so we can choose the account here accounts receivable you can have multiple accounts and so it's kind of like a customization report that gives you the detail of the transactions so that's kind of nice if you select if you select all this gives you the transactions for everything and so this is kind of similar if you select all of them to that journal report where it gives you it gives you all the activity that's happening but this might give you all the transactions so I'm, I'm thinking that maybe you can count the transactions here although there's a lot of subtotals that might be a little difficult for your billing so you might count like the actual transactions or use the journal report to count all the uh all the accounts that are impacted but anyways you can experiment with that report detailed uh detailed account transactions so now you've got this similar with the detailed i won't go into that now we're running short duplicate statement lines so these are the ma other major two we've got the inventory item detail this is of course given a report that's going to give detail and more information about the balance sheet line item of inventory which we don't have one here so if you have inventory it would only be relevant if you had inventory sales by item report that's breaking out a sales line item uh, by what you sold which is going to be service items and inventory items so that's a quick overview of all the reports my goal here is kind of was to try to say hey look most of these reports are tying into an an account on the balance sheet and the income statement which i kind of got tripped up on because they started us out with all these future oriented reports which are neat and nice uh kind of kind of reports but they're not as traditional uh, accounting reports but we'll dive into to more of these reports uh, in more detail in future presentations and also I just want to note that the, the customization we will get into some of the customization which can also give us more reports like comparative reports and whatnot and they've got some interesting and some some good tools that are in some ways more advanced than some other accounting softwares for example like a QuickBooks so Xero's got some good stuff there